On today's episode of MacMost Now, let's take a look at the undo function. I was surprised recently to find out that not every computer user knows about or uses the undo function. For me, someone that's been using computers for 20 years, the undo is kind of like the space bar. It's just always there. Use it all the time. You don't even think about it. So the basics are very simple. When, say, you're in a text editor and you're typing something and you want to take back what you just typed, you go to Edit and Undo. And in this case, it will tell you it's going to undo typing. I do that and it takes back that last line. Now I can continue to use Undo and I can either do Edit and Undo or I can use Command Z. Command Z is pretty much the universal command on Macs for almost every, every application out there for Undo. So I'll do Command Z and you can see it takes back what I previously typed there. Now the cool thing about the undo function is in most cases in most apps you have a redo function as well. You can see it right here. The keyboard shortcut is usually Shift Command Z but not always. Uh, sometimes it's Command Y for instance. And I can redo and I can do it in steps. So you can see there were two steps there. There's this first section I typed and the second section I typed. Now, what constitutes a step that an undo is going to undo? Well, it depends on the app you're using. So, for instance, text edit there, I typed those first three lines very quickly, so it took them as one step. And then I typed that fourth line later on, so it took that as the second step. Some apps will take each line as a separate step. Some apps will take each word, or some apps will just look for pauses in when you're typing, and it will use those as steps. So, it varies from app to app. Now graphics programs use undo as well and uh, for instance here's Pixelmator and I'm going to draw and draw and draw and I can then go to edit and then undo brush there or just command Z and you can see the redo function is shift command Z here so I can redo those steps as well. However not all apps are the same. Here I am in Photoshop and I'm going to do the same kind of thing and if I go to undo you can see I've got command Z and I can undo that there and I can only just undo and redo. Basically Command Z shifts between the two of them. And Photoshop uses steps and Shift Command Z and I can basically step backward and then step forward using those commands there. So it's a little different in Photoshop. How about things that are not where you're editing documents, like say in the Finder. So the Finder can undo for several different things. For instance, I can select a file here and I'm going to Command Delete and move it to the trash. Now I can go Edit and Undo Move that project. So I can undo Moves and pull things back out of the trash. And I can also redo them as well. Likewise, if I were to change the name of a file, I can use Undo to undo that rename. So the Finder can use Undo in a variety of different ways undoing what your last action was. So what undo does depends on the app. Just look in the edit menu and see what's listed there. And kind of observe how that edit menu changes and what commands he actually does according to the edit menu uh, when you do different actions. And you can get familiar with using undo in your favorite apps. Another thing to keep in mind is how many levels of undo. How many steps can it undo? Older apps may only have one undo. You undo the last thing you did and that's it. Other apps may be able, be able to undo many steps. Sometimes there's even a preference in that app's preferences for how many steps you can go back. Of course the more steps you allow the more memory is going to be used by that app. Especially like a painting app or something like that and they may store large chunks of data for each step. Well how about on iOS? Well iOS it depends on the app. And of course you're not going to have Command Z in the keyboard. So you're never going to have that keyboard shortcut. And there's no menus at the top so there's no edit undo. So a lot of apps have an undo button. Like for instance here in Pages you can see the undo button at the top left. I tap it and it un does an undo there. Tap it again does another undo. And I can redo by tapping and holding and I get a redo button. And it will stay there and I can redo both of those until I tap elsewhere. Now apps that have an undo button and even some that don't will allow you to undo by shaking your iPad. That's right. If you do this you'll get this button that pops up and allows you to hit undo. So it's kind of a different thing but it's something to try. If you think an app should have an undo function but you don't see an undo button, try shaking it. Of course other apps use shaking for something completely different like say uh, shuffling or doing something randomly or something like that. Now as I see it the undo function has two purposes. One of course is to allow us to take back mistakes very quickly and easily. The other one is to allow us to take more risks. When we're creating something like say writing a document or editing some graphics 
we can go ahead and try something new. Try a new menu item. Try a new filter. Try typing a, a few words of text or making some changes to the text. And if it doesn't work out Command Z and you're back to where you were before. So learning to use Undo can actually make your work better and make you more creative. Hope you found this useful. Until next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. If you found this video useful there's one thing you can do for me in return. It won't cost you anything and it will just take you a few seconds. If you're not already at MacMost.com go there and then look for the video you just watched. And go to that page. Underneath the video you will see a bunch of different links that help you share the video with friends. Take a second to click the Like button. This sends a signal out to the rest of the Internet that the video is worth watching. Thanks.